Hey class, so we are going to wrap up the Corel examples here uh, with double tennis balls. So let's just go ahead and get right into it. First things first, we are going to check our assignment. Let's read through this. Corel starts at 1st Street and 1st Avenue. So that's just a cute little way of saying he starts at 1, 1. Okay, the first X and the first Y coordinate here, 1, 1 next to a pile of tennis balls that will be at 1st Street, 2nd Avenue. Okay, so 1st Street, 2nd Avenue. Uh, let's see, and Corel doesn't know how many balls there are, but Corel must double the number of tennis balls in that spot. For example, if there are three tennis balls there at the beginning, there should be six there after running the program. Okay, so I'm gonna skip reading through the specifics because I think we have enough to get started here. Uh, let's see, so things that we might use, we're definitely going to use move, we're definitely going to use some turns, probably turn around the most, um, put ball, take ball, definitely we'll use those, and then we will be using our loops just like before. So let's think through this logically. One is we need Corel to do something without knowing specifically how many balls there are, right? Because we were told that he doesn't know how many balls there are. And what that means is, as you can see, as we go through our different worlds, the number of balls is different. So we need him to do something without knowing specifically how many balls there are. So we need him to do something. In other words, we need him to do something while there are balls to do stuff with, right? And you can kind of already tell uh, the little trigger word there, the little um, hint while there are balls to do stuff with is the the operating sentence there so how do we start well first let's just jot down some notes we need to double the balls so let's break this down we need some way to reach the balls we need some way to do something while there are balls to while there are balls we need to figure out a way to count the balls and we need to double the amount of balls to count so when you have a big mess in front of you a mess of things and you need to count them one common strategy you might like let's say let's say somebody just drops like a stack of um, popsicle sticks or pencils or somebody just drops even just drops like I don't know a bag of coins or whatever in front of you and asks you to count them out like let's say they give you a bag of change and asks you to count it out you might you know if it's a small number of uh, change you might just point at each individual coin and count it like that and you're good to go but if it's a big mass of change then you might have to start sorting and separating them out and physically changing the position of each coin so that you can keep track of them better this way and that's a way to keep track and it's a way to count okay you're changing the position you're taking coin from one pile from the pile and you're putting it somewhere else and then you're starting another pile over there and as you're going back and forth between these piles you're tracking or keeping count of them okay so we're gonna apply that same idea here let's give ourselves some space so first we need some way to reach the balls okay let me get rid of this because we know what our objective is we need some way to reach the balls so to reach the stack of balls, we simply move, okay? Run this, and we're there. Now, we need to do something while there are balls. So while balls present, while there are balls, we are going to take ball. Let's see what that does. So now we see we're looping, and now there are no more balls. We've taken all of the balls, and the code has stopped. Okay. So what we can do is, well, let's see. We've taken all the balls, so let's move to the next spot, and let's put ball. What does that do? 
So we move to the next slot and we put one ball down. But we need to put down more balls, right? We can't just say there were seven here and now there's only one left. And the way we're gonna do that, or the way we're gonna count exactly how many balls there are is by including this move and put ball into our while loop. Because every time this loops through, every time this loops through the while loop, it's going to, oops, it's going to keep track of that for us. So let's try that. Let's see what happens here. Oh, there's a problem. So now the issue is we are checking while there are balls, take a ball, move forward, and put another ball on top of us. And then we're actually, we're checking if there's a ball where we just put a ball right on top of us. So that's a little bit silly, right? So that doesn't quite get us there. So what we need to do is we need to also turn around and return back to our original pile because that's what we want to check, right? Move, turn around. Let's see. Now, what this will do is we are taking a ball, we're putting it over there, we're coming back. We're checking if there's a ball, we're taking it, we're putting it over there. Taking a ball, checking it, moving it over there. See that? All we're doing is we're looping through and remember, our check if there's a ball now only happens after we've turned around and we've reset over here. After we have reset. So this code right here, this code resets the position of Corel. Same for this, let me tap this over. Same here. Same here. So this block right here, this is resetting his position so that we can run through this process again, okay? So now we've just taught Corel how to, let's see, function move pile, right? We're moving the pile of balls. There we go. So we can take everything that we have in here and put it in move pile. Okay, so now let's call move pile. Why is this telling me to indent this? What's going on here? What is this error? Let's see. Be nice, play nice. No? Okay. Oh well. Right, so now it should be doing the same thing. Oh, we've crashed. Oh, I think my code is bugging out. Hold on one second, guys, while I refresh. I think, like, Corel itself is bugging out. Okay. Why is this not happy? There's something wrong here where this is not happy. Not sure why. Turn around, put ball, move ball, or move, take ball. Why are you not happy? Okay, well, it's looping correctly now. Okay, whatever. Okay, so move pile, so we move the pile. Now we need a function. We're gonna teach Corel how to double the pile, right? How are we gonna double the pile? So let's see, when this code finishes running, what position are we in? What state are we in? Okay, we're back here. So we need to first, let's do a move again so we can reach that ball, right? We need to reach the balls. So we're just going to do a simple move. And the idea is going to be we've moved forward. We are going to take ball well let's see let's do a move forward and let's also turn around here now let's run this code let's see where we end up so now we've end up in this we're in this position now. this is where we ended up 
So what we want to do is while ball's present again, we are going to take ball. We're going to move. We're going to put ball. But now the difference is we're going to put ball twice. And this is what's going to double it. We turn around, move, turn around. So if you'll notice, this is actually almost line for line the exact same code that we have here. It's almost the exact same thing as move pile, except we have two balls. Big only difference from move pile is that here we have two calls for put ball. Okay. So now let's try calling double pile. Okay, so we're looping through. Now we're doubling. Okay, and now we've ended in this position. So now all we need to do to finish, we need to end like this. So we are on this side of the ball. We need to get on the other side and turn around. So that's just going to be move, move, turn around. So now let's run it. Now remember, these are things that we've taught Corel, these functions, right? These are things that Corel now understands. So we're moving, we're calling our move pile function, then we're moving again, we're turning around, and we're calling our double pile function, which works just like move pile, except it's calling put ball twice. That's all the doubling action. Then we're moving, and then we're turning around to end. So now if we run this, we're working on moving the pile, then we're working on doubling the pile, and then we're working on going home. And these right here, these go home, we can do another function if you'd like. Function go home. We can do move, move, turn around, which is oops, the same code that we had here, right? So we could even just copy, paste that code in, it's the same thing. And then we can call go home. And it should work again. Let's put on max speed here. There we go. And it ends the same. So this is all the, the, all the individual commands that we're telling Corel. Okay, that's all it is. And these are all the things that we've taught Corel to understand. Now we can get rid of this. We can check our different worlds. Yep, works there too. Works there too. And it works there too. Now we can go to our test cases. Looks like your indentation is off on 18 and 28. Okay, let's see. 18, 28. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what it's. I don't know why it's not happy. I wonder if it's because of this. Okay, it is because of that. That is funny. It does not like these comments. Okay, well, we figured that out. So check code. There it is. I don't know why it doesn't like. That's funny. Can I do that? Interesting. So that's that's a weird quirk um, for code HS. Normally, uh, where your comments are spaced out like that really doesn't matter. Like, this is totally fine in the real world. Um, super fine. Really should not be an issue. But hopefully that helps you guys. Um, there yeah it just it just takes a little bit of practice but i know you guys can do it um just got to think through these things uh think real carefully think real slow plan out what you're gonna do you know the logical steps the instructions write it in english and then figure out how to how to do those steps with the code because all we're, all we did was move pile just like how you would sort something out in real life you would take it from one pile move it to the next to keep track of it and then for a double pile, we're doing the exact same thing, uh, just in reverse. And we're calling put ball twice. Okay, hopefully that helps. Thanks, guys.